from WDWNT, the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news. This is Park Center. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Park Center. Joining me on tonight's show, we have Allison. Good evening, everyone. Oh, feedback. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. Uh, we've got Rob. Rob's Still here. muted, Rob. Oh, no. Gosh, every... <laughs> Not every uh, time. Not every time. Hello. We've been doing so well. Oh, uh, this is such a great opening. Uh, Nathan? Uh, Kungaloosh, everybody. Kungaloosh. Uh, give me some of that Kungaloosh, too. And Pete? Sivako! And welcome to Park Center. Ugh. Mm. Uh. Good, good recovery, good recovery. Let's kick this show off with uh, something that hopefully will be less of a train wreck than that opening was. Uh, ah, we ah. have <laughs> the Beauty and the Beast inspired lounge at the Grand Floridian Resort is going to be named the Enchanted Rose. We'll be opening this fall and we have uh, some details about the menu. Uh, like Just scrolling through here, these actually look pretty tasty uh does anybody like have any strong like favorites out of this lineup yeah i'm pretty excited about the seafood dish they have like a, a crab and shrimp like gnocchetti gratin which sounds really nice um all the things that i, I like you. in one dish really um <laughs> for, for the ignorant here what's what's gnocchetti if you know what it is i i think it's like mini gnocchi which is like a like a, a potato based oh. pasta yeah okay um and uh, the crab and gnocchi and the gratin so and the, the jumbo. Yeah. It's <laughs> Who a invited bit Tony? Of, a mix <laughs> of Italian and French, which is interesting. Um, and I like that they have some like they're just like gastro pubby food, like uh, like truffle fries are on there. They've got uh, they've come out with a bunch of cocktails, and I'm I'm still looking at the mocktails since I'm still nursing, mm -hmm. so I'm still not drinking alcohol but they have really interesting looking mocktails and that's pretty important to me right now um i mean r real talk that garden cocktail is something i think i could chug a gallon of by myself that sounds amazing easy. yeah and i like Perfect anytime drink they put, after the drink. like yeah rosemary or or any kind of like yes. herbs in there that's always nice but i just want to Rose mention one thing about this Mary. concept art we've seen the car concept art like several times now um but every new concept art that comes out it seems like it's doused in like light like a thomas kincaid painting and um <laughs> yeah. and you're right like, you're right and You're all so the right. Epcot art I'm... is like that lately. <laughs> and I'm just like, a, I'm, you know, it makes me first look at it like, ooh, which is, I guess, what those galleries do. But now I'm kind of like, uh, every single one is like this. <laughs> and that, they can't all feel like heavenly. What's this really going to feel like when we go inside? I don't know. Yeah. I hope it does. Like, it looks gonna, great. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be so, so, I like how they're like, we're doing subtlety. Um, you know, it's it's Beauty and the Beast, but it's subtle, and it's like, well, then why did it have to be Beauty and the Beast? And it, like, it's <laughs> like I don't understand the point. It's really pretty and nice. It's I just don't know. I still can't put my head, my like my head around the Grand Floridian having like a Beauty and the Beast theme bar. Whether the like the menu is good or not, it's like, well, it could have been a good menu the way it like it, just redo the menu. Like I, I don't know. I think I'm yeah. nitpicking at this point. I think we just have to accept so that it is what it is, but. It is this interesting line that they're trying to do where they're like in some resorts, they're like, don't worry, like the integrity of the hotel is fine. This is going to be a minor sort of subtle thing. And then over at like the contemporary, they're like, we're going to put the Incredibles eye like in carpet. So that's what we're doing now. Um, Look, it's so, not I don't know. There's a at all. It's not nitpicking yeah. at all. It is neither themed toward Beauty and the Beast nor toward Grand Floridian. So it just didn't, doesn't right. really fit. Yeah. I'm sorry, Pete, I stepped on you. No, 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 not at all. I was going to say, like, uh, Beauty and the Beast, like, does fit at the Grand Flow, but, like, it should be so grand to me. Like, the Beast Ballroom should be the entire lobby. It should be six stories and grand. So, like, going from this beautiful grand area into this tiny little, I'm hoping it's a library, because it's the only thing that makes sense yeah. when you walk in there. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, that's all it should be, because, I mean, you're going from this beautiful, and I keep using the word grand and Grand Floridian, but it is this big ridiculously large gorgeous atrium and then you're like oh go into this beauty and the beast themed area 
it, the only thing that really would fit is a dark library, I guess. I don't know. I'm excited for it. I mean, uh, again, call me crazy. Um, it was a great space they had, but if you want to theme it, sure, just don't take away the integrity of the resort. Damn. Sorry, Rob. Take some extra time. <laughs> Go nuts. <laughs> Oh, we'll uh, we'll we'll give we'll give him his time in uh, about four topics, I think. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Moving on for the moment, though, to uh, something that's just been a bit of a trend around the uh, the parks and resorts in general. Uh, Crowds are really light right now, like Mm -hmm. super light. (laughs) It's it's been really light. Like it, like we knew it was going to be. Well, we didn't know. We thought it was going to be a thing over at Galaxy's Edge, like it was in uh, Disneyland. Uh, but it's been everywhere in the parks, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, if I could jump on this one, um, go for it. So I, you know, I just moved to Orlando, as a lot of you guys know who watch. Um, it's crazy how low the crowds actually are. So I, you know, I'm a big fan of all the parks, but Animal Kingdom I went to the day after Dorian, and there was no wait for any ride in the park for the first four hours of opening. And this is not extra magic hours. It's open to the general public. The only ride was Flight of Passage, which had a 30 to 35 minute wait <laughs> the first three hours, which is crazy. And everything else was a walk on for the first four hours last week. And then going off of that with all the other parks, I mean, if you follow our photo reports and our reporting, they, everything's been dead. Like, even the big rides, Peter Pan's been like 20, 25, yeah. 30 minutes, which, I mean, which is the appropriate ride. Let me, everyone watching, that is the agree. appropriate wait but people love it and they go crazy because if it has a big weight we have to do it um even seven doors have been less than an hour um and then get to the big you know the the gorilla or the elephants in the room sorry um is star wars galaxy's edge has been dead not dead but like you would think you have to wait like two three four hours you're waiting About 40 minutes, minutes. At the, at, yeah yeah but i mean at the right time minutes. of day yeah you, i mean if you go at the right time of day and you, and you and if you do a little bit of vacation planning you could wait forty minutes and get onto that ride. Mm-hmm. Um, a friend and then of mine the went park, yesterday can... and waited thirty minutes for that ride on standby, and then fifteen on uh, the on the single rider line. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, single rider sometimes just, down to, single rider is sometimes right. a walk on, and I'm trying to tell people mm-hmm. it's a walk on mm-hmm. single rider some days. And then, and if that's in Star Wars in the backside of the park. Slinky and Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror are nothing. Again, these and this yeah. and Tower of Terror is only working. I think with still only one shaft, which is crazy. Um, I, it just I waited longer Epcot. for the People Mover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Gosh, I, wanna, I mean, I do want to make a point across the board. I do want to make a point about that though. Yeah. I I don't find it as weird as some people are making it out. I think Dorian sort of messed with the post opening glow you know like of galaxy's edge but Mm -hmm. there's still people in there it's where everyone flocks anyway um it's just the slump this happens between october and christmas like or not october but sort of now ish time once the halloween party starts and and the diehards have went to the halloween party um and like those are traveling in for it and then everybody else sort of is waiting for christmas so like i'm not saying it might be a bigger slump than it has been in the past but there's always a little but bit Nathan, of a slump here because it's between But Nathan, holidays. to see across the board when you search all four parks, to see like only one, maybe two rides over an hour, that is yeah, cr- no, Like yeah. I've been going to the parks for many years and I plan mm-hmm. the quiet week because I have a 15 minute rule. I don't wait more than 15 minutes for any ride ever and I go on everything. This is insane. Insane. Yeah. Nathan it'll be gone right. though this soon. Is- this could be the natural ebb and flow of things, but I still remember like 2005 ish, and I just, I can't help but hope that that's what we're going to see. We're not going to see a decrease in ticket prices, but we're going to see better experience for guests. Yeah, you're right because they raised a ton of pricing everywhere. But yeah. yeah. By the way, let me just say that Rob has been spot on tonight. So far. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. We may go back to the top because on the top with the first. I think he was still today, muted. Why are they putting? Oh, what? I think are he was kidding? still. No, I'm just kidding with you, man. Sorry, just... sorry, <laughs> Rob. We're out of time. Sorry, Rob. Yeah. We're out of time. So on the first topic, what I wanted to say that I didn't get a chance to say was, why would you put Beauty and the Beast in there when you've already started to theme the place for Alice in Wonderland? Because there's already feels yeah. of Alice in Wonderland in there. You could have done like a Mad Hatter's 
thing with that restaurant instead of adding another IP into it and tied them together. Um, for the last one, for the quiet time thing, I definitely think it's Dorian because people had these big expense, expensive trips planned and they had to cancel them and they probably didn't want to take the risk if maybe Disney World wasn't going to be there when they got there or it was going to be, you know, maybe they panicked. So I definitely think that now that that's going, I'm thinking in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see a lot of people. Back to you, Pete. Can I also just say, <laughs> uh, thank you, appreciate the throwback. We're just doing whatever we want now. But for anyone watching, Chaos come rain. to Walt Disney World during a hurricane. Like, this is what you should be doing. They take care of you. Everyone said, like, what are you going to do? Because I just moved here. Like, if the hurricane hits you, I'm like, I'm going to Walt Disney World. It is the safest place. There's no lines. They take care of you. They keep food costs lower free. There's great, amazing experiences. And then a lot of people cancel. Come to Walt Disney World. This is the best time to be here. Oh, right, gonna, gosh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna the inmates I, are running the asylum then. Well, I'm just going to throw everything into complete disarray here because I'm going to recommend that if you want to take advantage of these lines, you go and book a trip with our uh, official travel sponsor, Never Grow Up Vacations. Uh, they are the author and authorized Disney vacation planner whose focus is in making magic for their clients with over 20 years of experience booking trips. They'll help you make your trip even more magical. So head over to www.travel to contact them about your next trip. Hopefully sooner rather than later, so you can take advantage of these wait times. This is uh, madness. We have lost. Oh all yeah, no, it's, the, the the script's out the window at this point. Uh, Let's move on. <laughs> move it. Moving <laughs> on. Yeah. Small this small is, time kind of indeed. Connected. Like good this is grief. Kind of connected. Yeah. I I wish I could have predicted this setup, but no. Uh, so the world of Avatar um, uh, Valley Morale Mo Wow. Oh, Moara. Wow. Yeah, the up. Valley of Moana in about Ma two Ewa, hours. I cannot, I cannot get through this script. You're a Navi specialist. You can't pronounce Moara? I, I'm... He's got it. This whole night... You've done, done this. You, so. I can't believe you've done this to me. <laughs> Ma Ewa! Ma Ewa! <laughs> all right, take... All right, come on. Uh, so it is, uh, we, we have Pandora, the world of Avatar, and Africa as well, uh, closing an hour early on a couple nights. Uh, that's that's at 8 p.m. on September 18th, October 3rd, and October 4th. Uh, there, as far as I know, there wasn't a reason stated for why this is happening. Is this just an artifact of the crowds being so light, or? Uh, well, Ben, when when the sun goes down earlier, uh, like in the areas where animals are at, the they put the animals in earlier, so there's less to see, and the ecrons are the same way. So ah, uh, yeah, you know, okay. The shift in times, they they just no, are taking I think it's in a little three earlier. specific dates. They're filming something or doing something. It doesn't make sense. Mm, yeah, for um, sure. Um, there's no way they're taking away two of their biggest lands, in my opinion. Africa is one of the best themed lands in all of Walt Disney World, and Pandora is one of the most popular, actually, at all the parks. So, I am assuming that since it's only three nights, that there's probably some kind of filming going on, or something happening, or some kind of VIP Disney Plus. special events. Disney yeah, Plus. Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus. You're, you might be right. You might be right, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't look into this too much, and I'll keep it there. Sibaka. Hey, <laughs> <some time. laughs> All right, so let's recover a little no, bit of lost time here because we we are small, behind. Small time for a topic. Yeah. Uh, m moving on to uh, the the rare editorial being covered on this program, uh, written by uh, some someone here. Uh, Nathan, do you, do you yeah. want to recap for us essentially what, what the, the subject matter is on, on this? Sure. So I, I had been thinking a lot with the closure, the closure of Club Cool and Fountain of Nations and Interventions about a editorial I actually had written about a year ago, which was basically about uh, how people sort of go, oh, no, the, like Epcot is never what it used to be and da 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 And I don't disagree with those notions, but... What they don't really come into play is like they have this really glassy, bright eyed version of what it was. And if you know the history of the park at all, like it is a history of compromise uh, between the fact that like World Showcase and Future World were two different parks that they literally, literally on a table smushed together to the fact that sponsors had a lot of say in what attractions were, including. You know, when people get mad at um, Disney for getting rid of Dreamfinder, I'm like, well, you need to yell at Kodak because it has nothing to do with Disney. Like, that's that was who was paying. If the only bill. Kodak was still around. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's so karma is a, a real B. Um, 
the the key though is like that's my that was my thesis basically and i and i and i had kind of shared it and uh jessica uh, who runs uh, the site um and helps run it said like uh <laughs> you guys know jessica well, she does i mean the day to day she does no does she does day. um she um uh she said, hey, can we repost that? And I said, sure, like uh, that makes a lot of sense because a lot of people right now are dealing with those sort of thoughts and feelings. So um, it's just sort of, a, I don't know, a little bit of a history about Epcot and, and how, though I'm not say, I'm truly not saying that the park is like not good or that the ideals it stood for were like un, like noble. It was, you know, I'm just saying that um, the park has always had its issues and it's always been dealing in um, compromise and because of that its vision has never been as strong as it could be it's never been as cohesive as it could be so this idea that we had this grand model of education well you had a grand model of education where Exxon was paying to talk about energy so it's not necessarily been this beautiful untainted history it's a that's a really fair point it's something that I, I think doesn't really get said often enough uh, because they, there are there are definitely a lot of like I guess we'll say like rabid Epcot fanboys uh, oh boy <laughs> but yeah, I go to Twitter oh boy I, I, yeah yeah I'm, I'm sure there, that's gonna be there's gonna be a gif of that later but I I have nothing against people who love Epcot at all I I thoroughly love Epcot and I am genuinely afraid of, for what what's coming down the pike here i i don't think it's necessarily the end of the world but i'm not i'm not happy about a couple changes and it's it's really good to get that perspective every now and then of like your nostalgia is fake essentially like everything looks better in hindsight so there there needs to come a point where you recognize that a lot of this stuff is just you thinking that everything was better back in the day and it wasn't actually necessarily well, people, that much better yeah and people really treat it like it was a utopia and it's like no it literally was the failure of walt's utopia like the yeah. fact that walt is not gonna have a statue mm -hmm. i, I kind of call it the what the heck statue because it's like <laughs> walt's just gonna be sitting there going what the heck is this i didn't want this this isn't what i asked for like it, i don't know i'm not saying it's bad i'm just saying it is yep. not a, a, a pure history well speaking of things that are bad uh, fuel rods. <laughs> fuel rods are going to start charging you. It looks like uh, for uh, swapping out your rod, your fuel rod. So if you bought a fuel rod under the uh, uh, belief that you would be able to swap it out for a fully charged one for free for life, like maybe I did, uh, this might come as a bit of shock to you. Uh, this oh. is something. Yeah, this is something that's been happening in uh, airports and other fuel rod locations for a while. I think even Universal has been charging for these swaps now. Um, I'm well, Universal charges for everything, so yeah. Oh uh, well, yeah, but uh, <laughs> Disney isn't going to be the first uh, theme park to get in on the charging game, I suppose. Um, this this bothers the heck out of me. Um, well, uh, let yeah, me talk I about this for this four minutes. As... <laughs> no, nope. I look at this as. A blogger tax, basically. This for the Ooh. average <laughs> Disney Park guest. Ooh, it doesn't it. matter because a lot of people arrive and they just need it for for their trip, and then it's not. It doesn't matter that it's not going to be reusable like this. But for those people who make their living in the theme parks, videoing uh, firework shows and parades and and needing to take photos for photo reports, <laughs> uh, this is a tax on them. And I think that. Disney doesn't care as much about keeping them happy as they do the average guest. So I think this is really where it's coming hmm. from. All right. So let me address that first because <laughs> I, I, I get what you're saying, Allison. <laughs> but we have all of these apps that Disney has given us, and now they're introducing the Genie yes. and the Disney experience yeah. and all these things that we have to run the entire time we're there. So while I'm there, I'm trying to... Uh, take pictures. That's going to take battery life. I'm trying to, uh, and and again, not just as a blogger, but just as like a guest. Uh, I have to run the my Disney. Yeah, you experience. should go to his Instagram because he's got gorgeous photos. Everyone. Oh yeah, it's... he does. He does. So so here's so here's that. I mean, with that one, my phone is never going to make it through the day with as much as I'm using it. So I'm always going to use something like that. And when the fuel rod system came around, I was like, this is really awesome and i bought one for me and then i bought one for a couple other family members and now we have six 
Um, and it's just it's so good. And as a matter of fact, I was there with some of the people from WDWNT when we were there for Stage 89. And it was like everybody knows, okay, we hit Main Street or we hit – uh, you know, Sunset Boulevard, and you yep. know, before we turn on to Sunset Boulevard, we're going to stop it, you know, on Hollywood and, and, you know, swap them out. So it's such a big thing for people who use them. And when they first started charging in airports, I was like, what is this? You're charging me a dollar for this. That's insane. And then I went to Universal and saw that it was $3. That's insane. Sure. Um, so I'm really hoping that it's not going to be that. But I've taken pictures of the side of the machines where it says free swapping. Um, just because I wanted to, like, you know, send that to somebody if something were to happen. Now, granted, I don't understand how they keep that business model because they've got to have somebody who comes, empties the machines, goes and charges them because it doesn't charge in the machines. Mm -hmm. They go and pull them out every day. They take them home. Some guy just, like, charges them up like you would bird scooters, and then he comes back in and, you know, and loads them up, and it, that's that's there's got to be a lot of a lot of fees involved with that kind of thing. So I think that I've probably gotten my $30 worth out of each of mine for as many as I've swapped. But the idea that I might have to pay to swap them out now um, mm -hmm. makes me a lot crazy. So especially yeah, if they're going to require me to use my phone to keep track of everything that I'm doing while I'm in the park. Yep. It is It is sort of a movie pass model, isn't it? Like it's, yeah, it's hard it is, to see how they... Uh, can I ask oh, a question? Because yeah, yeah. I'm a uh, fuel rod fool. I don't know these very well. Mm -hmm. um, can you charge these by yourself? Yes. Like, do you yeah. have to swap yeah. them? Okay. No, I, so I, they're I, still. If anywhere. you never swap them out in the park, you still can charge them and use them. As, yes. As yeah. And, of course. Yeah. But the I mean, beauty of it was is you never have to worry about it. You could bring one in. You could use mm -hmm. it until it's dead. Drop it in, in and then use it again. And when you're at Disney, you're taking tons of video, tons of pictures. You're on your phone, you're checking Instagram, you're posting to Facebook, you're posting to Snapchat, you're doing all these things. You're on your phone. Like if you walk around Walt Disney World, most people are on their phones all the time. So this was an oh, amazing dude. model. And I, and I looked at it and this is the only thing I had to say was, I said, how can they make any money on this? This is insane. Like I have a portable charger I bring and it was a little more expensive. I think I spent a hundred bucks on it, but it holds, you know, like two days to charge. Um, and then I saw the fuel rod thing, and I was like, man, I should have done that for the 30 bucks forever. And I was like, there's no way this is going to last. Like, yeah, they're going to lose money. Everyone is going to do this and either take them back home to their hometowns and keep using them, or just you're going to have – and exactly what Allison said, I thought it was genius. You're going to have the people who are there every day, the annual pass holders, just swapping them out, boom, 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 all the time. Even if they're not even, like, using them in the parks, like, oh, I'm halfway through. I'll just swap it for a new one. Um, yep. So I only thought this was a matter of time, which is the only reason I never did it. I just had this gut feeling. Um, I don't know. It's like a I, you know I, I do a lot of stocks. Like it just felt like this was too good to be true mm -hmm. that this would last forever. It's the movie pass of the theme parks. But yeah. you know that I mean to, to Nathan's point though, and I know we're talking too much about this, but to Nathan's point <laughs> about the, about can you recharge them? You can. And so like when Dorian was headed up our way. I went and charged all the ones we had up so that we had them ready to go. And they, you know, if we went to Target and bought one that was similar in size, it would probably be about 20 bucks. So, you know, the idea that I've had the ability to recharge them for so long is, is great. And yeah. I don't, you know, again, I agree with you, Pete. It doesn't seem like a sustainable business model, but that doesn't make me less disappointed the point of the fact they're taking it away. Even if they were making them for five dollars each, it doesn't make sense because they're not making any more money after that. So, like, why are you doing this? And people are throwing like it just it's crazy you're not selling enough of original product to maintain the how much you have to put back in the machine constantly yeah. over and over again i think and they were like making on too many people machine. losing like imagine there was a gumball machine in the supermarket where you went every week as a kid and it was like you have to put two dollars in for unlimited gumballs forever and meanwhile you're putting in a quarter every week like they're losing money on gumballs like that is crazy yeah. i am there every sunday clicking that machine over and over again it's just it doesn't make sense it's 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 literally contractual, and I think that's the only reason that Disney has not kicked them out of the parks and done it themselves. Because this oh, is something sure. that they did. Disney a favor. They did. No, Disney I a think favor. this is very sustainable if it's Disney, because it Disney just calls that an expense for the experience. Like like it, it lets them people use the but app. They I can guarantee. write that off. But a, a a third party company, you're right. This doesn't make any sense. No, so, I mean they're use, chaos. First of all, they probably paid. <laughs> Fuel Rod probably paid to be in the parks. They're losing money on the machines. They're not getting anything from Disney, and they're only helping them because, hey, all your customers get this unlimited power all the time. Fuel Rod wanted exposure. They wanted the machines. They put now they're losing money hand over foot. It's MoviePass. It's it's, and I feel bad because 
a few of our people have been excellent to me, and they actually respond to me, and we've talked, uh, but this was Court. a bad decision. I don't know. Fuel Rod, final note. Yeah. Fuel Rod. <laughs> Love Fuel More Rod. Like Those guys rod. are great. So, no matter what happens, I support them. You guys were in a bad situation. Sorry, guys. All right. And now everyone's pissed at you. Post show. More on the post show. Post we, show. Yep. And we, we are going to make up some time on this one. Uh, yeah, three before, minutes. <laughs> no, we're gonna we're we're gonna spend less than that on this. I guarantee it. Uh, the Skyliner uh, has entered cast previews at this point. Uh, people are writing on the Skyliner. Initial reports from what I've I've seen and read online uh, on Twitter and things like that are that it's fine as long as it's moving. The air condition <laughs> issue shocked. is not an issue. It moves quickly. You get from point A to point B. It's more reliable than the bus system. What? It's gonna be good. <laughs> you mean it works? Yes, I mean it works. I have said this the entire time. And yeah, you have. Hated it. I know, and I have loved the Skyliner, and I'm so happy it's coming into fruition. Listen, when you're moving that fast, uh, it's it's gonna happen. Now, again, if it gets stuck or stops, I am not on board with that. But when you're moving it, you know, 15 to 16 miles an hour in the sky, uninterrupted, with a breeze blowing right through, you'll be fine. And this is coming from the sweating world champion of the world who goes through four <laughs> shirts a day here at Walt Disney World. I'm, I, and I love it. this. You get great <laughs> views. Yeah, he's seen it. You get great views. It's a, it's a better system, better than the buses, better than the boats, better than your own driving. I would rather park at a at a Skyliner station and take that to parks than drive to a park and walk. You can right in front. I think this is the future. If there has to be changes made, they will do it. I think this is a test run, as I've said. I think we will see the Skyliner expand. Um, I hope so. And, and this is going to take off. It's, the only thing is, one, you have, a lot of people have a fear of heights. So to, for, it's going to scare off, I want to say, uh, maybe 15 to 19 percent of your crowd who is just terrified of being that high, even though you're only going but about two and a half stories up. who wants to ride with cowards so, anyway, right? Like, honestly, I'm just joking. If you're yeah. staying in a three, three, if you're staying in a third story or taller in a hotel resort or here on property. You're taller than you'll be in the Skyliner. So don't look out your window. It's the same thing. Um, and Disney yeah, but my window's not moving 15 miles an hour. Okay, they take know. every precaution. Even if you stop, they have boats to take you off. They have the trucks to take you off. They do. It's We've seen so, all that. Just, I'll let you guys talk about it. But I, like I said, out of the gate, I was all about this. I, I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue unless yeah. you get stuck or stopped. And I never think that'll take too long for it to get moving again. Does anybody have anything to, to add to that, really? <laughs> Let's, we can talk let's about make it. up the Sorry. time. Yeah. All right. Our last topic. We we got to give some time to this because this is this is terrific. Oh. I love this. It is absolutely adorable. And oh. we're gonna get to the picture that doesn't have text over his face. Oh. Look at him. Not that one. Oh, Look at that. oh creepy. Gosh. Oh. So oh much. I'll He's take adorable. it. Look at that. I am so excited about this. So (laughs) Tangled is one of my favorite movies. And it's the movie that I I sing all the time music from it to to my daughter. uh, Mostly because when I was on maternity leave, I just felt like it was endless, endless chores. And like, so I sing every day, like the the opening song from Tangled to her. Um, So Pascal is... uh, the mascot on all of her labels for daycare so it Uh has her name and a little pascal on it and a little little rapunzel um so it's so nice to see a park doing something more than bathrooms albeit amazing (laughs) bathrooms with this intellectual (laughs) property Um, she has three great she has two great grandparents that live in taiwan and i have to take her there in the next year or two so that she gets to meet them and, and her extended family over there so now i'm like all right no excuse we have to fly through tokyo make a stop so she can see the the real pascal audio animatronic super excited <laughs> oh, this is just this is just tokyo taking like i like how yeah, we're like star wars land has just opened and then tokyo's like we have a baby pascal and everyone's like oh, <laughs> never mind tokyo's still better because <laughs> um, it's true it's true it's just so like why did this not happen sooner it's insane this is wonderful and uh yeah i'm very excited for any sort of tangled stuff but especially in tokyo because i know they'll yeah. do it right I, lo- I love this thing i'm never going to be able to see in my lifetime it's <laughs> oh don't be like that <laughs> oh you 
something out. Have some faith. I would. Oh, I, I would on, love man. to. But I. I hey, trust in pixie I dust. It. Come on, bro. We'll, we'll hope. We'll hope. Maybe I'll get some help from Magical Travel. They'll they'll get me over there. <laughs> Faith, cross pixie dust. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Come on, where there's a will, there's a way. We can make this happen, Ben. <laughs> so next week, I'll have up my GoFundMe to get me to go to... No. Now no, no, is the time, Ben. Can help a poor child. Not tomorrow. Now is the time. <laughs> Five can help this poor, well, this poor Pandoran boy. <laughs> yeah, I can't afford the rent if I go on a trip. That's a <laughs> hey! Ben, have you been to Disneyland? Yeah, I have a couple times. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, uh, World of Color, I uh, love it to pieces. Oh, that's right. You're, 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 you're uh, behind yeah. you before. Back, back before uh, this. Yeah. I, I was going to say, that would be the first to fund me and then Tokyo. But, yeah. uh, but let's just go ahead and go for the Tokyo one then. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're heading to Tokyo. Tokyo too much. All right. I'm well, to Tokyo. well, we're actually heading into the post show, not Tokyo. So, uh, th thank you, folks, for joining us this week. Uh, if you are uh, a uh, a patron of WDWNT or a, a Wigs member, uh, we highly rec recommend that you stick around for the post show uh, coming up live right after this. Uh, if you're not watching live and you're not a Wig subscriber, uh, we highly recommend that you do watch live. We record live every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And we highly recommend that you head over to patreon.com slash WDWNT where you can subscribe to be a part of the WDWNT Inner Globe Society or Wigs. Uh, for as little as $2 a month, you can get, can get access to our post show, the post shows for Sea of Real Late. Uh, I'm not, for WDW News Tonight, we're on autopilot tonight, folks. This show is A plus material. <laughs> <laughs> so check that out. And uh, be sure to check us out next week where hopefully we don't flub half the show. <laughs> Thank oh, you. The best show ever. It was it was pretty fun, I gotta say. But uh no, this is a fun show. Thanks for watching, guys. You got the real us. Yay. But yeah, and the post show is gonna be great, so stick around for that. Uh, if you're gonna be for, here for that, stay tuned. Otherwise, we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Have a beautiful time. Does the end work? It's muted. Nope. Oh, let's <laughs> unmute. This is the story all about how my little world got turned upside down. I'd like to take a minute to sit right there. I'll tell you how Dorian helped my trip now. Yeah. <laughs>